Hello, Hoppin' John here. In this uh, video segment, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, hot water system that we've got on the roof here. Uh, in previous videos, we've talked about uh, the photovoltaic system and uh, the windmill a little bit. But this one, we're going to talk about the hot water system. Uh, basically, what I've got here is uh, three flat panels. And uh, by doing the calculations on it, it comes out to somewhere in the neighborhood of about 10,000 BTUs per panel under uh, full sunlight. Uh, I've got 110 gallon storage, which we'll shoot a little video of that tank here in a little bit. And then on top of this little critter, you can just barely see it, is a uh, photo tape panel that produces the power for uh, the pumps inside. And I'll see if I can't zoom in if this will let me. Yeah, it will let me. So uh, we'll go up on the roof and we'll take a little closer look at these uh, photo of these uh, hot water panels and uh, get a little better description. The newer, the newer ones are uh, vacuum tube. Uh, supposed to be a little bit more efficient, take up less room, less weight. These are extremely heavy, uh, but I like to say I've had these about 10 or 11 years, something like that. Uh, it is an active system, has a glycol running through the plates, uh, and basically all it is is a uh, Oh, there's probably around 10 copper pipes that run from the top to the bottom of these uh, panels, and then there's a copper plate that's uh, been soldered to it and then painted black, and then, of course, they're inside this aluminum casing. So we'll head up on the roof and take a little closer look at them. Okay, here we are up on the roof, uh, a little closer look to these panels. Um, basically, what we've got is an aluminum case with a piece of uh, hardened glass here. Uh, as you can see inside here, there is uh, basically half-inch copper tubes that run down the center of these things, and then there is a piece of copper that is uh, soldered to uh, the copper tubes, and uh, basically all painted black, and it just absorbs the sun real well, transfers the heat to the glycol. Uh, these panels are paralleled together. Uh, the cold water comes in, or sorry, cold glycol comes in the bottom, uh, pushes it up. Through the, through the panels and up to this common header up here at the top and uh, goes all the way down at the far end and heads towards the storage tank. There is a little photovoltaic panel up here on the top. It probably is only about uh, 15 uh, watts or so, somewhere in that neighborhood, 12 volt. Runs the little circulation pump. So when the sun is shining and shining bright enough to actually generate heat, uh, the pump will run. Otherwise, the pump is just stagnant uh, waiting for you know, a good sunny day. So that's really the temperature control on it and how it determines whether it's going to put hot water in the tank or not. This is old technology. They, these were probably uh, around uh, 20 years old when I've got them and I've had them about 10 years. So it's good technology. It just, uh, they, they are heavy uh, compared to the new vacuum tubes. Uh, there's a lot of these panels out here, so you can pick them up used uh, just about everywhere. Uh, I see them on Craigslist every once in a while. Uh, but other than the weight, uh, they work real well. Uh, the vacuum tubes are a little bit more efficient than what these are and considerably lighter, but they have a considerably higher cost to them as well. So uh, we'll head downstairs and take a look at the storage tank. Okay, here we are down in the uh, solar storage room. Uh, basically what I've got right here is a Ream solar storage tank. Uh, it was manufactured for this purpose. It's 110 gallons. Uh, there is a copper coil in the bottom of this that the glycol circulates through. Uh, the line on the right hand side is the uh, supply line to the panels. Uh, and basically when the sun shines it makes electricity on that little photovoltaic panel and this little uh, pulse star module over here regulates the voltage and the current to the uh, little circulation motor here that uh, circulates the glycol. Uh, but when there is insufficient sun, uh, that means there is insufficient electricity and heat, so it, it's self-regulating. So it works real well. The uh, system I've had for probably 10 or 11 years now, uh, I picked it up used. It was 10 to 15 years old whenever I got it. So this thing is pushing 30 years old still runs like a champ. Uh, the reason I picked it up, I had drove past this house with this system on it for uh, several years and I finally got up the gumption to go and knock on the door and ask him you know, how it worked and he was pleased with it and uh, 
he basically told me that it worked real well for the first 10 years or so, and then something went wrong with it. He couldn't find anybody to fix it, and he needed to put a roof on his house. So he made me a real good deal on this thing. So worked out well for me. And uh, basically what had gone wrong with this is uh, the glycol side had an automatic water makeup to it, and uh, it had got a small leak in it, and it had made itself up with uh, basically straight water, and it froze and busted several of the pipes, and uh, he didn't know how to fix it. So uh, I made some minor repairs to this tank, uh, brought it up, put it online, and it's worked ever since. Uh, basically what it does is the white line that you see over on the uh, left hand side brings in the cold water on the bottom. When we use hot water in the house, uh, our domestic city water comes in through there and then the black line that's about the middle of the tank, which is a little deceiving, it's actually got a quill that goes up towards the top uh, on the inside of the tank, it pulls the hot water off the very top of the tank. Uh, that line goes inside to my natural gas hot water heater, which is a 40 gallon natural gas, uh, the cold water supply on it. So basically what I'm doing is feeding hot water to my hot water heater inside. So in the event that this thing cannot produce enough hot water for us, the natural gas hot water heater just kicks in and does its normal job. Um, this thing has just worked like a champ for all these years. I have had to clean the sediment out of the tank, you know, flush the bottom of this thing a couple times, uh, but it, that's about there is to the maintenance on it. Uh, uh, it's got a couple pressure gauges and uh, temperature on it to let you know that the system, you know, is still functioning on the glycol side and, of course, a little expansion tank there, but uh, works like a champ. Uh, it, it saves me a lot of money. Uh, about eight months out of the year, give or take, it makes all the water, uh, hot water for the house and uh, probably makes upwards of 20 to 30 percent uh, during the winter. And if you haven't noticed that uh, during the winter, uh, the sun just doesn't shine a whole lot. We have a lot of cloudy overcast days, so it doesn't get uh, a lot of good sunlight. But when it does shine, even if it's 30 degrees outside, this thing will still make you know, 130, 140 degree water. Now during the summer months, this thing will push, you know, 190, 195, so it makes extremely hot water during the summer. Uh, but like I say, it saves me a ton. Uh, you know, my natural gas bill is next to nothing, you know, basically a minimum service charge uh, during the uh, summer months, so really pleased with its performance, and uh, that's about it for now. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll try to put some more videos together as, uh, as I learn more about this stuff. Have a good day.